somebody. So. Okay, so as you mentioned, it is a lot um, to take, to, you know, to, to digest, but um, I think if you, you know, follow the format and recognize, you know, like every other day, you'll have something to submit, but as I indicated in the, um, I think it was in the orientation module of what to expect in terms of time commitment, um, mm -hmm. The, the major things um, will be the homework assignment. So let me just jump in um, first to show you again, I, I post all the announcements here. So, you know, make sure you keep up to date with all the announcements. Um, and you should as students receive a notification. If you set up your notifications that way, the announcements will be sent to you by email. Mm -hmm. And then here I keep the three most recent um, announcements for students to review. And this homepage is, is going to be stagnant. It won't change. So this is how um, it'll always look when you log in. Down here, you'll notice weekly modules. And I have, um, you know, each week um, I wrote twice a so week one orientation, week one, chapter one, because I basically split it into Monday through or Sunday through uh, Wednesday and then Thursday to Saturday. So that's why you see links for week one twice and, and also for all the other weeks because we're doing two full chapters or two content areas per week. And again, as I started, it is a lot, but I think once you get into the rhythm of things, then um, you know, you'll know you just know what to expect and how to schedule your time. So the week one orientation, um, every every module begins with a brief introduction and objectives, and I'm actually going to jump over to student view because that's important to show the requirements that are um, set up in terms of being able to move from one module to the to the next. So let me go back to the week one. And again, it's going to start, you know, these are the things that we are hoping to cover that by the end, you'll, you'll have a um, understanding of this material. And I just noticed this is an overflow from last semester. So I'll take that out. And then I have a little list of things that are due. And so it's kind of boom, 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 you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Um, but the orientation assignments are pretty easy and straightforward. It's just kind of the orientation of getting, um, situated and acclimated to, to the course. And um, I have some resources for students who may feel like um, it's been a while maybe since they've, been, they've done any math or they just feel maybe a little bit of anxiety. And so these videos that I've selected are great preparation um, for the type of calculations that we'll do um, in this class. So this class meets the mathematic um, and reasoning requirement for transfer. We use math, it's not technically a math class, but we do use math as a vehicle to understand statistics. So once we calculate something, the most important thing is be able to interpret um, the value that we are um, focusing on. So this is all um, pretty probably standard from other online courses that most students have taken. Um, it kind of goes over the requirements in terms of what you, what's needed in terms of technology. And then I've um, indicated the course poly straight from the syllabus. So I've just taken the information from the syllabus for students to kind of review here within Canvas. Mm -hmm. um, and late work, um, I do accept late work. It's not in a, in a fast track. It's not a good idea to fall behind, but life happens. And so I always accept late work, but there is a 10% penalty unless, you know, ex extraordinary mm -hmm. circumstances um, warrant that, you know, late penalty be um, omitted from your final grade. But I don't want that to stress students out. I, I really just want them to focus on doing the work. Even if you submit it a day late, that's better than not submitting at all because the work is cumulative as you build um, skills in each chapter you're going to need those skills um, as we progress through the term. And then just some basic information about um, academic integrity, probably very standard across all um, classes. And this was our first assignment um, where I just kind of outline what the expectations are of, of my students and what my students should expect of me. And I, I've simply just set up as a discussion board and want students to agree and then mm -hmm. give them the opportunity to add something if they feel like, you know, I wanna also include this expectation of my instructor or, or 
um, the instructor can expect this of students. So I, I kind of open it up for students to provide some feedback. So it looks like a lot of students have already taken part in this. Um, if anyone hasn't updated their profile, I really want them to do that just because it helps humanize our class. It can be something like an image that represents the student or, or an actual image of the student because it just helps us kind of connect with one another. Okay. More information on the course orientation and then time commitment. Here is where I kind of placed an example of what a one week would look like. And it does seem very daunting, very overwhelming with a lot of work. But as I, as I indicated here, the, the major assignments will be due on Wednesday and Saturdays. Mm -hmm. um, and those are the chapter homework assignments. Um, the other assignments, when I when it says play pause activity, it'll yes. be the presentation of a crash course video. And then I ask students um, a couple questions and ask them to dialogue with each other. And then at the end to answer a basic question, like was this helpful in understanding the course objective? So it's not like a huge assignment. It's really just, um, making sure that you're viewing the videos to, uh, you know, to get the, the content um, in a visual format. Um, so those activities, even though it seems like it's a lot, it's, it, it's more of a time commitment to watch the video and then answer the two um, activity questions. So mm -hmm. not a big assignment, but here the, the um, homework assignment is, is due on Wednesday and Saturday. If it was a 16 week, it would only be due on Saturday, but since we have to con consolidate everything. And then I'll talk a little bit more about the, those assignments in just a second. Um, I'm gonna switch over just to modules to show you what's been happening as I've gone through these um, pages. Notice over here, a little green check mark. And that means that I have successfully viewed or nexted through each of those pages. So you have to get a green check on every page in the module to okay. be able to open the next module. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, so it'll show in this gray, see how I can't click anything in, in chapter one yet? That's mm -hmm. because I haven't obtained um, green check marks in these just yet. So this is kind of nice because if you have to step away um, and you, you know, want to recall where you left off when you open the modules, you can see, oh, I left off on on this page. I'm going to start there and continue nexting through each of the module pages and, and um, go over and, and read the content, watch the videos and make my way through to the end of the module. So again, just a reminder that you have to get those check marks before you can progress to subsequent modules. And here I have a Q&A. So whenever students have questions, general questions, um, maybe about a due date, um, as I have mentioned, this is a brand new course and um, we're bound to have some problems along the way. Um, so here's a great place for students to say, I had trouble opening the play posit or I didn't receive credit for all of the questions and whatever it may be I'm not even sure what may go wrong but this is a good place to kind of post those things because other students will say you know I had the same issue and then that'll give me some feedback to make some adjustments to ensure that that all of those um, issues are resolved and then I just included a student lounge um, you know in a face-to-face -face setting you might talk to students before class during a break after class and it just kind of allows students to connect with one another and this can strictly be something that doesn't have anything to do with statistics it could be about talking about um, clubs that you're involved in or different activities that might be happening on campus and then I provide a little bi biography of myself. Hopefully students can connect. And from there, we get the opportunity to complete a discussion board and introduce ourselves and watch a, a brief little video about how statistics is used across a lot of different um, disciplines, subject areas, in addition to different careers. And sometimes students come to this class thinking, I'm just going to take this because I have to check off a box and then don't really recognize how applicable it is to their major. And what's your major? I, my major is anthropology, anthropology. but I'm looking to maybe um, doing some work 
um, requisites required for grad school. Wonderful. So, okay. So, it, um, you know, for graduate school, it tends to be a course that, that um, you know, needs to be completed. Um, but we find that in a lot of disciplines and career fields that we use a lot of statistics. I was looking at the discussion board and students who are pursuing um, criminal justice and, and how statistics is used in that field, um, or if someone is in so, um, social work and human development, how we use statistics to kind of understand social policy. So it's a good opportunity to, to, for students to recognize that we're not just checking a box because we have to take the class, but to really see how it applies to um, our, you know, the, the careers that we aspire to obtain later after we earn our degree. So um, just to point out, any video that I do include has a, a transcript um, so students can read along, which sometimes helps um, digest the, the material instead of just listening to it you can read along and that also helps retain information so let me move through got a lot of activity going on in the discussion board which is wonderful and then this um, i've already had some students indicate that they've had problems with this getting to know you survey it's a google form and um, some students weren't able to see this portion of it and for the most part, the biggest issue um, or reason for that is because they were not logged into their MySWC Gmail account. So um, because I'm recording this, this applies to everybody. If, if you do not see anything below this um, um, bracket, it's probably because you need to switch accounts. Sometimes if I'm logged into my personal Gmail, I'm not able to access um, Google Forms that are connected to my Southwestern College Gmail. So you it might be as simple as switching over accounts to then be able to view this. And then I've asked students, once you submit this um, survey, you'll get a little response that says, your, your answers have been submitted. And I just want students to take a screenshot and submit it as an embedded image. And I've given instructions on how to do all of that here. So with every assignment, I tend to provide resources, links directly to how to do something so that you're not searching around in the orientation to find um, instructions, how to do technical things in the course. And then at the end of every module, we have a sum summary of things that we accomplished and what we learned. Um, and then I always provide students links directly to the Q&A if they have some questions or and to the student lounge if they want to connect with their fellow students. So let me go back to the modules page and show that now I've um, gotten, I've earned a, a green check mark on all of these pages. And as you can see now I have access to this next module. Um, and so all of these dots indicate that I haven't viewed any of the pages. And that's why I'm unable to access anything in chapter two. So just again, it, the course is set up with uh, requirements within the module and prerequisites for each. So all of this needs to be completed before we can move on. Okay. And then um, this is, a, I'll quickly go through one content module. Um, and we, I had broken the course into four units. And so the fundamentals of statistics are, are covered in chapters one through three. And so if we begin here, we see an overview of what those three chapters um, include. So this is the, these are the unit objectives overall across three, three chapters. What is it that we're gonna focus on? And then I have links to all three, but again, these won't be accessible until I complete the content in chapter one. And if I move through to the first page of chapter one, again, it's broken down now by chapter one. These are the specific things that we're going to focus on. And then these are activities. So again, the play posits are crash course videos and then two answers per activity that need to be um, addressed. And then I'd like to go over this um, discussion board, which is optional and note that the home with the homework assignment looks like. So I'm gonna quickly go through. Um, so this is what the play posit. Have you had a chance to do any of the play posits? No, I'm actually going over the one that um, the getting to know you. 
Great. I'm trying to see if it can appear because I also see it's not loading for me. So. Oh, okay. So let me, once I go through, then maybe we can troubleshoot together. I'll stop recording and then we can troubleshoot together. Thank you. Um, so this is what a play pause it looks like. And I've tried to put very explicit instructions because it probably will be a new activity for many students. Um, so I try to walk through it from a student perspective and give as much detailed information as possible. Um, and you'll hit the play button, then it'll walk you through where you need to submit um, a response and then where you submit your work and then I'll have to go in there and manually grade um, because the last question is an open-ended question where I pose um, um, something for you to think about and then you respond in text and I have to go and, and read that and provide feedback. So that's what the play posits look like. And then as mentioned, the whole, entire text is embedded into the course. So we don't have to buy a textbook. Um, so it saves students a lot of money. We're moving from a book that um, costs nearly $100, uh, e version, and it's about $45 or $50. And so now this um, text is completely free and um, accessible from day one. So students don't get behind because they are waiting to buy the, buy the book. But it also requires, you know, reading from a screen, um, which some some like, some don't like, but the benefit of saving money, I think, outweighs that uh, downside of having to read the text on the screen. These text boxes are usually where I pull out definitions. So when you're taking notes, it's always a good idea to focus on those definitions that I um, highlight in, in a text box. And um, if we continue to move through, Whenever a video is presented, uh, students are required to watch it and take notes accordingly. And um, normally, if I present a video, I'll, I'll, I'll indicate what I'd like you to, to focus on, most likely because it's um, probably going to be covered in the homework. So again, here we have a, a definition and then a video that have, in, includes the closed captioning if students want to read along. And um, on this page, I'd like to highlight that I use tabs a lot. Um, so the tendency may be once you get through this page to hit the next, but um, I want students to make sure that if it, you see tab pages that you read all the content on each page. Normally it's set aside for example. So if I present information and then I'll say, here are some examples of things that we've just discussed. And on this page, it's specific to the difference between independent and dependent variables. And here I've included video uh, links to videos that students can watch to kind of help um, comprehend the, the material that's presented on this page. And similarly, um, again, this is a tabbed um, page where I present the difference between qualitative and quantitative data as well as discrete and continuous uh, variables. So I tend to present information in text, but also in video where then students who like and um, benefit from a visual presentation, they can see it all like in text and then also in, in a visual format that helps them better um, understand the material. Um, again, this, this page includes some links to some videos, an embedded video with closed captioning, and then tab pages that go over each type of um, scale of measurement and then a summary of those scales of measurements. And um, more, more just text information with examples, same uh, for this page. So it's kind of, um, you know, the, there's a structure that, that is continued throughout the course. Um, here's some more information on sampling techniques and um, these are the basic forms of sampling when we're doing research. And then I provide information on, on more complex types of sampling. And again, I indicate that um, each video pro provides information that will most likely be covered in the homework assignments. So we, again, um, are presented with the difference between types of research scenarios or experimental research methods that include 
experiments, quasi-experiments, and non-experimental or correlational research. And again, each content area um, includes a video for um, the lecture. And here we end with the difference between descriptive and inferential statistics. Again, chapter one is very heavy on terminology. The later chapters aren't so much um, focused on terminology. We'll have some new terms per chapter, but chapter one is the foundation of statistics. There's a lot of content um, and a lot of vocabulary to learn in chapter one. And we end the chapter with um, what we refer to as summation notation. So um, just like a textbook, it walks you through um, the order of operation, how you would approach a particular type of problem. And then I included one of the videos from the resource page that I, I showed in the orientation. And this all prepares you to complete the homework assignment. Um, before we get to the homework assignment, there's another crash course video about um, the topic of mathematical thinking. And it simply um, presents, you know, how do we describe the world around us in numbers? And, and we do it a lot more than we actually think. And it's a good presentation of how we engage in, in using statistics uh, more often than we, we realize. And so, that's another little activity for students to complete. And then this is the major assignment. Um, so we'll be doing two of these per week, um, per chapter. So um, I've identified, you know, what is the purpose of this particular assignment? Again, it's to meet the learning objectives that were stated at the beginning of the chapter. And you can click in, in oh, let's see here. You can download, I'll have to check to see, you can download it into your, to your computer. I'm not sure why it's not opening, but that's good for me to go back and check. Um, but if you use this little link here, you should be able to download it um, and print it from your com computer printer at home. Printing is not required. Um, you should be able to open it and then view the problems there um, from the um, Canvas page. I'm going to leave student view for a second and see if I can open it from my view, and then I'll have to go back and and see hmm, what the problem may be. Maybe I'll go to chapter two to, to model that, but that's good for me to know that there's some issue um, with viewing the homework document at this present time. So once you open it, then um, students um, will need to answer the questions and then complete them on line paper, or if students to choose to print out the document, that's fine as well. And then they'll have to scan their work um, and upload it um, to the assignment. So let me go back to student view. And so you would hit start assignment after you've scanned all your work and then submit um, a scan document, preferably as a PDF, um, and then submit your work. Now, when you're working on, on the assignment, I highly encourage um, students to collaborate with one another. I'm not interested in, in students turning in perfect work um, on their own. I actually would prefer students to work with each other. So I've given students the option to use this discussion board to ask for help. Um, let me see if I can open it from here. No. So, students um, may say, I'm having trouble on item number five, Does can anyone help me? And so this is where students can go and, and post questions, help each other out. And once that help has occurred or that collaboration has occurred, then students can go back and submit their assignment. Um, each student has to submit their own assignment, but it's okay to work with each other to complete it. So again, even though it seems like there, there's a lot of work to do, I do um, encourage the collaboration between students um, to help each other because I firmly believe that when you help each other, you're, you are actually learning the material better. So hopefully that doesn't, uh, that makes the assignment seem a little less, um, you know, time consuming, but also intimidating where you have to do them on your own. It's uh, it's better if you do them in conjunction with your fellow students. So I will go back and see what's going on with those documents. Um, and then at the end of every module, we have a kind of a summation of the things that we um, completed in addition to what we learned. 
And normally I'll provide some optional resources. Psych majors have to take this, um, the lab portion of um, the Psych 270. For social majors, it's optional. And for other majors as well, it, it may be optional to take the 271. But I always include a video of how this all works in the application SPSS, which is what students would use in that lab portion of the course. And I'm gonna to go to the modules and then show you that now I have access to, because I've gone through all the pages, all my check marks, and now I'm able to open module two, or excuse me, chapter two. And let me just go to this homework and see if I'm having the same problem with the document. Um, are you able to see where it says chapter two exercises docs? Um, I'll open it. But... Are you able to see exercises chapter two where it says number one at the mean time to respond? Do you see that? I'm not sure if it, it shows on the shared, um, but this document did open. So it may just be a link to chapter one that's missing, but I just was hoping to get confirmation that you're able to see the exercise open. Um, I'll try. Let me. I'm just trying to open this. Let's... Oh, you don't have to open it. But right now on your screen, do you see um, 2E Introduction to Statistics at the top? Yes, I do see it. I see okay. It. And then if I click here where it says Chapter 2 Exercises, do you see the document open? You may yes. not. You do. Yes. Okay. Okay. So, so these are the problems. Again, um, you can just read them from the screen and complete them on line paper. That's fine. Or students can um, download this to their doc to their computer, open it, and then um, probably will need to create space in between each item to then allow for written responses. Um, but it doesn't. You don't have to print it out if you don't want to. You can read it from the screen and answer the questions, and then submit your lined um, paper homework document. So it looks like chapter one, um, the link is broken. So I'll go back and fix that. Um, but that's pretty much the structure of every module. We have content presented um, in text and in video. Some. Um, video presentations that have questions embedded that I refer to as play pause it. One more activity that um, appears in some of the modules, but not all of them is called Padlet. So you'll see um, it'll say optional. And again, these are just uh, opportunities for students to illustrate that they're understanding the material. And this one in particular says, find examples of where you see measures of central tendency being used. Um, measures of central tendency include the mean, median, mode. I put an example of, um, I decided to use a cartoon um, and I explain the, the humor behind the cartoon. And then I give instructions of, if students want to participate, um, instructions of how they would add uh, an article, a short video, um, whatever it may be for students to illustrate that they see examples in the real world of what we're learning about in this class. And again, this is all optional, but it is um, a good way for students to uh, master the learning objectives that were presented at the beginning of each chapter. So at this time, I'll just see if you have any specific questions um, about what I just covered. Questions at the moment for, for okay. the Thank you. You're welcome. And one more thing that I do because I had presented chapters um, one um, through three, the, the unit objectives, um, we don't have any major tests. Instead, what I've created are um, self assessments. So at the end of chapter three, you'll notice here it says unit went self assessment survey. And after each unit, uh, students will be asked to complete these self assessments. So they'll answer these questions. Um, here they have to respond in writing. Here is this, um, you know, you determine if you agree, disagree, agree or strongly agree to these statements. And these are considered the 
test um, for each unit. So I don't have um, timed exams or timed quizzes. It's really just working on the homework, working in collaboration with other students on the homework. And then at the end of every um, unit, um, you have a self-assessment. So there's unit one after chapters one through three, and then unit um, two covers um, chapters four through six. So here's unit two self-assessment. And again, those are all just um, ways of students determining how well things are going for them in terms of understanding the material. And then um, at the end of the course, there's the end of course survey that I'd like students to complete, similar to the getting to know you survey. It's a Google form um, and I want students to kind of reflect on how the course went and then um, if applicable, provide feedback on how to improve the course for the next semester. So again, just to go over a, a, an example of chapter two, again, it's content presented, and then you have the homework assignment and the, the discussion board that it can be used to help each other complete the homework together. And that's the major assignment. And then we have our little activities of the play posit, the Padlet, which is optional, and then the play posit in this particular module. So I think with that, um, I'm going to just um, show where the syllabus is. And we should be able to open it here from this view. Um, so if students need to review the course policies or any specifics about the course, that's where they would go. You can download your own copy using this icon. And then I created some links to direct um, um, material in the course uh, orientation that just makes it a little bit easier to find. And with that, I think I'll stop um, sharing and I'll stop recording so I can post this.